Somewhere there is Africa. Where the human race was being originated. And you see that, and you know that what we have done with our motherland. Africa has the longest history of anywhere on earth because it is here that humankind originated. Hello, guys. Today, in front of you, a modern day immigrant or migrant is sitting. The difference between myself and many other immigrants is only that, which I'm going to show you today, that I came by plane. Many, many are trying to come to come to the western shores. They're willing to give their life and they're coming to this land by, by crossing the sea. There are millions of, of refugees, there are millions of asylum seekers and migrants. Many are trying to come to this so-called heaven or, 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 or I would say that it is a heaven for, for millions of people who are, who are from all over the world. Either they are from Africa, Asia, South America, you can name it. But today my focus is going to be Africa. When I was growing up, I heard this term of slavery. And, and I was not very well aware of that, what is slavery and what is immigrants and, what, and whatever. Later on when I came to this country as a migrant and so-called economical migrant, then I realized it, what is slavery, what is immigration and, and how the people in the, in the ancient time and old time they suffered slavery. It's not very long ago. I'm not going to go into details, you know very well what I'm talking about. Before I go into details, I'm going to show you a small clip where you understand that why the whole purpose and the theme of this video that from where I'm coming from and what's the whole purpose of this video. So let's, let's watch this clip and after that come back and we'll talk about it. Let's watch. <laughs> ਮੰਗਲ <laughs> <laughs> It's 46 degrees Celsius in Galafi, on the border between Ethiopia and Djibouti. Like every morning, groups of migrants make their way through this barren land in the crushing heat. Their journey has been fraught with obstacles. <laughs> These migrants are finally getting some rest after walking for four days straight. They managed to rent this plot of land from local farmers. And it could be days before they can sleep peacefully again. Mm. Mana <laughs> 
I believe that after watching this clip, you have you have a similar kind of a thoughts what I had. I always wanted to open my heart and talk about it. But after watching this video, it has given me some kind of a more energy. It has given me some kind of a more passion to talk about this topic. That's why I want to talk about this topic very openly. And I, I promise you that I'll be very straightforward and I, I will open my heart in front of you. Whenever we heard the, the word slavery, the first thing come into our mind is Africa. This is the site of the infamous slave market of Zanzibar. At the height of the Arab slave trade in the 19th century, thousands of Africans were sold from here into a life of servitude on the plantations in Zanzibar or were sent back to Oman. And we know very well from thousands of years, Africa has been made slave against their will. Either it was the time of pharaohs, either it's Roman times and it was Arab times or later on it was the Western which includes Europe and America. You know, you know the history behind it. Nowadays, we are seeing this Black Lives Matter. Since I came to know this world, I heard this word. I, I, I have seen that Africa, how they are suffering, despite of, they, despite of they have all the wealth in the world. And you know very well, second most traded commodity on this world is coffee. And, and the coffee was been originated from Africa. Africa has all the resources, which include gold, wheat, coffee, and uh, diamonds, everything. So all, they have all the wealth in the world. What are the reasons? They are the people from Africa. They were being made slaves. Till today, on this, on this day of the world, till they are forced to leave their homeland, their motherland, for the pursuit of heaven, to pursue from Neverland. If any, of, if any of you has an interest in the history, they must know that Africa is the place where the most richest man was born. And he belonged to, from Africa. His name was Mansa Musa. His wealth was so enormous that in today's world, it, 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 it has been accounted as 400 billion in dollars. 400 billion dollars. So you can imagine that how rich he was. So, so what was the reason a person who was so much rich and who was belonged to that kind of continent and today in today's world that continent is known for many things that continent is known for diseases that continent is known for poverty that continent is known for, for migrants slavery and many more things what went wrong but the best known of Mali's rulers is Mansa Musa the first great nephew of Sunjata Keita. He was so famous, he was depicted in this map of the world by a Spanish cartographer in the 14th century. In 1324, Mansa Musa began a lavish pilgrimage to Mecca, reportedly with a very large entourage of 60,000 porters and 500 servants decked in gold, each carrying a golden staff. En route, he stopped in Cairo. He was received with great reverence by the ruler of Egypt. Some accounts hold that he was carrying as much as 150 kilograms of gold and that if you take his wealth in total by today's value, he could be worth as much as $400 billion, which would make him the richest individual in history, period. First of all, I want to talk about that what went wrong with Africans? What went wrong with, with whole Africa? If you research, even, even the name Africa was been given to them by white people. Africa name was given to them by Romans. But rather than I'm, go, I'm trying to sit here and talk about politically correct thing, I'm going to talk about the reality. I'm going to talk about the fact that what went wrong. You see that world moved on. There was, there, there was a time when people were walking on a foot. There was a time when people were walking, when, when people were using camels, horses to commute from one place to another place. But that time has long gone. Africa, people in Africa, they didn't do, they didn't move on with the time. And that was one of the reasons that many people around the world, either they were from Western white people, they were Arab people, or, or they were pharaohs or whoever they were, they were able to make them slaves, they were able to rule on them, and they were able to take all of the resources they had. And, and, and they use it for their own advantage. But African people still, they, I, I, I see many documentaries, I watch many documentaries where they show that how people are living there. They are still living there, the, 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 they are still living there the way people used to live thousands of years ago, the people used to live hundreds of years ago. And, and they say this is the way, the, the simple life in Africa. I, I disagree with that. I understand the simplicity of the life as well, but there is a time when you have to move on. As I said before as well, but there was a time when people were, were walking on a foot, when people were using camels and many more things. But now time has moved on. 
if you will not move on history will never remember you history will walk over you people will walk, people will walk over you and that's the exactly that's the number one of fundamental reason happened with africa they did not uh, they did not move on with the time they did not focus on technology they did not focus on education and they did not focus on the thing they should have focused they were living in different tribes they, they, and there's nothing wrong with that this is what their their culture is they were living in different and and they didn't have any unity they didn't realize that the time is moving very fast and and they st and they stood still and that's what the one of the most fundamental reason is this that this this the beautiful continent the people are suffering there and which and, and we are living in this in in day of the uh, and we are living in this modern world where the people are being uh, willing to give their life to come to this heaven come to this western shores Nelson Mandela has, has given most of his life to uh, for for seek of independence the pursuit of of, of li for liberation as well when he was being released from from prison that he has no energy left i'm not here to bash africans i'm not here to bash black race because i am one of them as well i'm a migrant myself i didn't know I, I am belong to a poor country as well i want to ask african people that how long you're gonna start blaming white people how long you gonna start blaming other people that they came to your they, they that they came to your continent and they ruled over you they made you slave and they and they took all the resources from you that what is the what is the reason behind it either you're not very powerful to fight against those people or either they are too intelligent for yourself so, the, the, so to overcome that, you need to upscale yourself. You need to make yourself stronger. You need to make sure that you are you have some kind of a unity. So Africa had to come. Africa has to unite itself to combat all of this intrusion and and to to make sure that the resources they have they can use it for themselves rather than the the resources that have been taken by the foreign people. But now today we're living in modern day slavery. We are, we are willing to leave our motherland, we are willing to leave our family and go to the same people who used to rule on yourself. We cannot take this thing away from the West. They have invested into the into institution. They, they care about their people, either it is about the education, health and, 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 and the basic, basic needs of any human being. Who has this responsibility to provide this kind of basic needs which are the basic needs of any human being? I have a question to ask to all the African leaders. Oh, that if you not if you do not if you're not going to respect or not going to give you the opportunity to your own people, and you think that you will be respected outside of your country by wearing the similar kind of a suits, a ties, and and you come and and you see and you think that you will sit uh, you sit side by side with white people and you will be and you will be respected similar way. It's not going to happen. If you're not going to respect your own people, you will not be respected outside any country in the world. They, they prosperous on three principles. Number one, the institutions. Number two, the, the justice system. And, num and number three, their culture. If your institutions are strong, nobody can stop your, your prosperity. And number two, justice. Justice system is very equally important to your institutions. Because if you, if you have a if justice system, there's a merit there where everyone knows that they will, if, for, if there any wrong happen to them, justice system is in place, institutions are in place to look after them, then nobody will leave their land. And third, third is culture. Culture you already have. Your culture is very strong, but sometimes your culture become like culture. Culture work adversely. You do not want to adapt a modern way of life as well. As sometimes culture become too much influence in your life, and that is one of the reason as well. You do not people do not prosper. That's why whole Africa people fascinate their culture, but they don't want to live in that culture because people have moved on so far from that culture, but Africa is still stuck in their culture. So I think you got my point, what I want to say. Those are traditions, treating women and girls as second-class citizens. Those are bad traditions. They need to change. When I came to this country, I see that the many charity ads were on the TV until today as well. M most of the m most of this charity ad, 99, I would say the 99 percent of the charity ad, they always show Africa a miserable situation. They show show and small kids, women, how they are suffering. There are a lot of diseases as well. So they kind of sympathize towards that to, to collect the money from here and they and they send it to uh, send it to Africa. Now I have a question to ask. This is a child sponsorship emergency. We've all seen the shocking pictures coming from East Africa, where thousands face starvation and sickness. 
this, that this charity, whatever they're doing now, noble cause, whatever they are doing, that it did, that it hasn't bring any change whatsoever in Africa. Because change not gonna come from a charity. Change gonna come from your from from yourself. Change gonna come from your unless you want to bring the change. Other, otherwise, this charity they 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 collect lot of money for their own advantage. It is kind of a. I I would say I will go one step ahead and I would say that this is a, still we are living in a master and slave kind of relationship. As you see that many celebrities, either they are sports star, they are they are they are in entertain they are from movies they are in sport they are politician whenever they they love to go to africa and have their picture taken and have their video shoot out where they show all of this poor poor part of they, they show this poor africa this the kids how they are suffering and they show that how good they are they want to show their 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 their, their noble side their noble side of their, them and they want to show and they want to show that how good they are and and you know that and, he, and how Madonna, she went to, to Africa as well and, 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 and adopted kids and took, took to America. So you understand that how people perceive Africa, how they, they think of Africa and how, how they how they still using Africa. They used to treat this part of the world in, in ancient time as well. But the things and norm has been changed and they have adopted the new way of treating you. So in nutshell, I, all I wanted to say that that time has come now that Africa leaders, I have a request and very direct appeal or very direct message to the African leaders as well, especially who, are, who have a strong hold and who has power to do something as well. That do you want to live like this for thousands of years uh, or, 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 or you really want to do something about it? You want to come together and, and give your people some respect, give, give your, and treat your people as a human being or you just want to treat them like animals. You need to come to your senses and stop, uh, and stop being a puppet in the hands of West, stop being the puppet of in the hand of any other person. I'm not blaming West here because those people, we have to appreciate Western leaders. They work for, uh, for they, they work for the interest of only for their country, for their nation, for their people. So I would, I would greatly, I, and I will admire that because they're not doing anything wrong to their own countries. They are honest to their countries and they are, they only, and they, whatever they do that, they never ever betray their own people. They never go against the interest of their own, own countries. I will not demonize, I will not say anything. I, I have no ill feelings towards Western, Western leaders or Western people because they, are, they have all the right to do good for their own people. So there's nothing wrong with that. It is responsibility come on you. Everyone knows that, that today in today's world, immigration, asylum or migration has become the world's most number one problem. Either you see in America, you see in Europe, you, wherever you see that most of the headlines are migrants. Apart from apart from coronavirus nowadays, if you take the coronavirus out of it, you see that migration or immigration is the world's number one problem. And I, then I ask myself a question: What is the reason behind it? I would say that nature has no intention to have this multi multinational society. You see, there was a reason behind it. There was different continents like Africa, Asia, Europe, and and and, and America. It was okay to trade with each other. It, when, whenever you try to go against nature, then you're gonna you're gonna face this kind of problem, and that's what the problem we are facing today. Because it is not natural to live in multi multicultural society. People have different culture. They have different skin color. They have different way of living, and they are they are different way of taking things. It is it is kind of a clash of mind. It's a clash of culture, clash of religion. It is so it is not compatible. That's why we are still today on 21st century in this modern world, modern technological world. People on street of america they're fighting for their rights they're fighting for black life matter we cannot turn back the clock the only thing i would say that to especially to africa you need to, to work on on education you need to work on innovation technology and you need to make your institution strong and bring the justice system it is my humble request to, to, to Western nation that leave them alone. Let them live their, live their life. Because, because every time I see about, uh, I, I would hear about people who want, who really want to help uh, help Africa, which include Bill Gates as well, many politicians and their celebrities, their sports star, uh, everything. I would see the change. The change, I would say the change will come on that day when a person from Africa, that person will go to, to that person will go to either Europe or America, adopt a white, white kid from there because there will be poverty or they think that Africa is a, Africa the best place to, 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 uh, to, to raise that kid and they become there a lot of opportunity in Africa and they, and they bring, and that black person, they bring that, that white kid to Africa and, and look after that person and look after that kid. I would, I will, then I will believe that, that there was 
world has changed and Africa has changed. And I am not sure that it is possible in, in, the, in my lifetime, but you can, one can only hope for it. But, I'm not, but my, by saying that it is not, it is not my intention that, that, that black person has to go to, to, to Europe or, or, or America and adopt a white kid. That is not what I'm, you know what, what, why, the reason I'm saying it. I am saying it, we will come to that kind of area, then we'll understand the world has changed and Africa has changed. And I would also say that to, uh, to Western and white people especially who think that they, have, they, that they have a divine kind of a message from the God that they have to fix the whole world and they have to give this democracy pill to all the nations in the world. I, I understand, I respect the democracy as well, but we have to understand that Africa and many other countries, they are, they are different kind of system, people have a different culture, they live in tribes. So please stop giving this democracy pill to everyone. Please stop interfering in Africa, leave them alone, let them live. What you have brought to that, uh, that part of the world, whatever, for example, one hand you give charity, on the, on the other hand you sell, them, uh, you sell them weapons. When I see on my TV screen that young African kids on a civil war, they have this kind of a weapons on their shoulders. I understand, I, then I ask myself a question, this, this kid is an engineer. People, people who has given him this kind of a weapons, for how, did they made their weapon by themselves? Of course not. The, the, this weapon must have been gone from 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 Western nation because the only the, because nowadays the biggest exporter of weapons are either America or 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 England or or France or or Russia. It means that weapons are going from one hand. We are these nations are giving them charity. On the other hand, this money is coming back into these countries and and you selling them these weapons. So that's why I'm, I, this, this kind of a hypocritic kind of an era we are living in. So stop interfering in those countries. Leave them alone because that right now there has no change came into that on those part of the world. So leave them alone. Let's see that what they will let them live because they because Africa where this all of this human origin this this humanity was been originated. So they, they know how to live. Let them live by their own and leave the, give them opportunity to prosper. Do trade with them. I am I am in I am in great favor of trading. Trade with them. Give them a tr uh, have, have kind of trading relationship. But please stop interfering. Stop dictating them how to live their life. At the same time, I will ask African as well. Please stop this kind of thing. I was watching this video where I was one lady was talking about that being to culture. But what she was talking about that when many Africans they go to America or West as well, then they come back. They so I been to I know more than you. I understand why they say that because this there's a different world. They they know more thing. They they want to say that they because they have seen that part of the world, so they know more. But the same time stop stop demonizing so stop disrespecting african stop disrespecting your own people so my so my message today is very clear my message today for african is as well please the time has come to time has come that, that you bring some change in yourself make your institution strong may bring bring merit in your in your in your society second thing may uh, that that open up with your culture try not to to imprison yourself in your culture second use your geographical location for your own advantage rather than in your disadvantage i i'm, I'm going to also ask all of this rich businessmen which include Bill Gates and many other celebrities and sports star please focus if you really want to help African or black people please there are many black people in America there are many in Europe and there are many in England please help them they, they need they need more help than people living in Africa in people living in Africa they know how to live within their own means so they can they can survive so Stop trying to be the kind of a, the father figure for them. Stop trying to, to show them that you have a kind of a divine message from God that you have to go and, and help Africa. So please, I, this is my request, so stop doing that. The reason I left my my country because because pursuit of living better life. I, I, in modern day, I class myself as an economical migrant. Like I came here for better education. To, uh, I came here to prosperity. But come back home, there was the system was not fair. There was injustice. People who are power, people people who are well, they they got away with everything. And people did not have the, those kind of facilities. People didn't have didn't have access to the system. They they were deprived. So you understand that the only difference between myself and people who are crossing the sea as well i came by plane and though and those people unfortunately they're crossing the sea and and willing to even give their life as well just to land on the shores of this heaven but i i would say that please the time has come now stop pursuing this heaven because this heaven is going this heaven is not the heaven what you're looking for many questions can be asked as well then why i am in this because this, why i am still here to answer that question this heaven is kind of a place when you are in it you are in it there's no way out
At the same time, I would like to thank to this country who has given me this opportunity, who has given me the power to speak and who has given me, th me this kind of opportunity. So I am sit sitting here speaking freely. And that's why I'm, I'm raising my voice to the people who are living on that part of the world as well, that right now you have the opportunity to look after your mother. So please look after your mother. F finally, I would say that if I've said anything you did not like, I apologize. Thank you very much. We're great. Even when the road is long, hope in the face of difficulty. Hope in the face of uncertainty. The audacity of hope. Always remember, but move forward and do things together in order to reach out to our full potential.